Thanks, Dr. Campbell. Up next, we have DF. DF, hi. Hi, thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Campbell, for the lecture. Um, thanks for all the wonderful work you do. Um, your lecture, I, I, I like you to provide some clarification on IGF-1. Your lecture says animal protein promotes cancer cell growth while plant protein does not have the same effect. Is it because there is no IGF-1 in plant protein? And also does, it, does the proliferation of cancer cells depend on the amount of IGF-1 in animal protein um, versus uh, in animal protein uh, or does it depend on the IGF-1 that our broad body produces? Well, yeah, it, you, there's, uh, by the way, the IGF relationship that uh, we should be talking about is the IGF being produced in the body, not the IGF in the food. I mean, that maybe has a little effect. I know in dairy cattle, there were some studies on that, but basically the IGF that's being administered in the form of food, if it is, uh, that's kind of immaterial. Uh, the IGF that really matters is the IGF we produce ourselves. That in turn is triggered. In other words, increased levels of IGF or decrease, if you will. There's also IGF-2 and 3 and 4. I mean, there's a mixture of uh, insulin-like growth hormone factors here that, uh, you know, it's kind of mix and match of what they do. But they, but they are called growth hormones, and they do what, what it says. Uh, they might cause growth in some cells more than other cells and so forth and so on, a lot of complexity here in a sense, but the IGF that uh, we should be concerned with is the IGF in our bodies, and that's turned on, by the way, when we consume an animal protein-based diet. It causes an increased synthesis of IGF. You know, IGF is a good thing uh, because uh, it's, it's for good for growth. So young people, uh, they've got to have enough to you know, encourage good growth, and uh, it, it tends to be lower in people consuming plant-based foods um, and uh, I think that's associated with a slightly lower growth rate among children who are eating this kind of diet, slightly growth, maybe not terribly necess uh, significant, but at the end of the day, uh, they'll be as tall as what their genes permit. It just takes maybe just a slight bit longer for, for children to, uh, to get there. But that I, the IGF plays a central role. IGF and all of the isomers like it, IGF two, three, four, so forth and some other sort of growth factors. They kind of work together. Um, and so it's not the amount of IGF in any particular kind of meat. It, it, it really isn't. Um, there, there's uh, said to be some, and there is some in dairy, in dairy products and people worry about and they think that's troublesome. But uh, again, even if it weren't there, uh, I can tell you the animal protein, the casein in this case, in the dairy is going to cause the increased synthesis of IGF-1 in the body. There's no question about that. We did, we actually did that kind of experiment. We saw an increase. Thanks very much, Dr. Campbell. Up next, we have Marcus slash, slash Marjolin. Hi. Thank you, Ben. Hi, Dr. Campbell. Uh, we would be very interested to hear your opinion about taking the COVID vaccine and long-term safety. Wow, that's a sensitive question, as you may recognize. <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, many years ago in China, I didn't talk about that at all today, but we did, did a big study in China that many may, may know about. Um, and uh, we collected an enormous amount of information to see why it was that in China, in 170 bit different villages across the country, why those uh, some disease, disease rate was higher in some counties and lower in others. And we had access to at least four or five uh, different diseases that we could look at. One of them, uh, and we collect, as I say, an enormous amount of information. And uh, in fact, uh, let me show you this, uh, this right here is the latest thing. It was in 1989, CSF. It's a huge, huge book. And before that, it was. Uh, it was this book here. That was the main, that was China study one, both in Chinese and English. Again, a huge volume of information to see here. But the reason for showing you that is because when the coronavirus hit, I recall that we had uh, actually examined the effect of nutrition, if you will, and the causes of liver cancer in China. Liver cancer was one of my specialties. We worked on that in the laboratory, as you know. And uh, liver cancer is caused by a virus. In fact, 
that virus that causes liver cancer has probably has been called before the number one virus, the most fatal virus now known, more so than coronavirus. Well, the coronavirus has been bad, or COVID-19 for this year, for sure, over this past year. Um, but we, so we had a, a liver cancer, uh, a viral cause of cancer in that case. Um, and so I went back and looked at the data we had collected. I knew some of it, but I made a systematic collection of the data. It turned out, and it, this is really significant, people consuming more plant material in China. Mind you, this is about almost 9,000 people. people. So it's a big study. People consuming more plant material, they formed antibodies to the virus. So the prevalence of antibodies, the prevalence of people with antibodies to the virus was much higher in the people consuming plants. At the same time that was going on in those people consuming plants, their level of active virus in their blood called antigen, that was down. So the higher the plants, the lower the, the, lower the active virus. The higher the plants, the higher the antibodies, okay? That's plants. So then we started looking at factors that reflecting uh, animal food intake. Animal food uh, basically uh, was the higher the animal food, the lower the uh, immunity, the lower the antibody. Now, very clear. These are all highly statistically significant results. We say in statistics, there's significant the probability level of 0 0.001. Okay, so as they consume more animal food, they don't form antibodies, no immunity. However, when they consume more animal food, form animal protein, for example, obviously, it's a good indicator. Uh, those people had a, a higher test po positive test rate. And there was that was highly significant related to the liver cancer. So those consuming animal foods, they got the liver cancer. They were still carrying around the virus with them. They were getting the liver cancer and they did not form immunity to the virus. Very simple. Plant foods, exactly the opposite. The plant foods, they formed antibodies, less antigen, that's less after the virus, and it was not related to the liver cancer. It was so striking. I, I, in all my years of research, I don't think I saw results any more striking and convincing than that. Consuming animal food causes liver cancer. Consuming animal food causes the virus to, to actually do that. And it keeps the virus becoming, becoming immunized, if you will. Really, really, I say quite striking. And here was one of the most striking things of all. The amount of animal protein being consumed in rural China, where we did the study, was only on average about 10% of what we do here in the West. So what this was really showing that even these low levels, these really low levels of animal protein consumption or animal food, if you want to call it that way, uh, was associated with liver cancer and with active virus. It was really striking. I published that information, by the way. It was published in the EC Nutrition uh, about a month ago. Um, and uh, I, I know it's uh, been greeted by some folks as sort of being almost unbelievable. And some people don't want to hear it because it, it basically suggests that uh, maybe you can use nutrition to get immunity. In fact, in answer to your question, that's why I had to give you that background, because in answer to your question, and having worked, and, and there's more to that story than I've told here. I mean, we did, we actually worked with that virus in the laboratory with experimental animal models and saw the same thing. You give animal protein, the cancer forms, this is in cancer in this case, caused by the hepatitis B virus. Give animal protein, it turns it on. It's that simple, you don't, doesn't, doesn't do it. So it's the same thing. We know something about the mechanisms. The animal protein also did something else to it. It actually uh, repressed so-called natural killer cells in, in, in the animals, which is used to you know, be resistant to it. So all of that information, plus all the other information from other kinds of studies, um, I make my own decision. And I, that was my first, first part. I want to make that my first part of my answer, really. I do not want to be in a position of telling people what to do. That's not my job. I'm not a physician, uh, and I'm even hesitant to tell people what I did uh, because there might be uh, influence that you know some people would accuse in the wrong way. I know that um, I, for me, and I'm putting it's my own life in my own hands. 
I do not get vaccinated. I did not. And it's not because I'm fearful necessarily of the side effects. It's just that vaccines, uh, they have a lifetime in many cases. Sometimes they're fairly short. They also have unpredictable side effects at the same time. If that is a strategy we're going to follow, this was being suggested. If that's the strategy we're going to follow for future virus diseases, and they're going to be coming constantly, they have been ever since the, the beginning of time. And we never know for sure when these viruses arrive, how serious they're going to be. If we're going to rely on a public health strategy of always coming up with a new vaccine to handle the new virus, we have to kind of wait for a bit to see whether or not it works. Um, and we're going to, we're only going to take enormous numbers of vaccines that it is now. When we do that, maybe that is a strategy. I, I don't want to say it's absolutely wrong, but, but all I would ask when we're thinking about that, let's think about nutrition. I do the kind of nutrition that I think creates a very stable immunity. I have never taken a, a, a vaccine for a flu, neither my wife nor I. I'm 87. People think I'm crazy. But I haven't taken a, 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 a vaccine for that um, and never had the flu. Now, since, at least since when I was uh, you know, really, really strict on it. So um, I don't know. That for me is information I have in my head. If others uh, appreciate that or find it interesting, it's your decision or somebody else's decision as to what to do. But I'm just, you, since you asked me, like, that's, I have to tell you the truth. I did not take the vaccine and I do not intend to take it.